Hello and welcome to Studying Abroad, the show that accompanies you on your journey, sharing the guidance and insight you need to make it happen. Hey everyone, I'm Parth and I'm sitting here in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to the second episode of Destination Success. In this episode, we will be talking to students from India, from Cape Town, from Lebanon. We'll be talking to somebody who's going to Columbia University right now and somebody who went to EDEC in Paris and somebody who's going to be a future student in fall 21. So it's going to be an exciting episode. We'll be talking about a lot on decision making on how did they make the most out of their life overseas. Coming up in today's show, choosing the school and course for you. Our guests share how they tackled fundamental choices in their journey to study abroad. Advice surgery? Is it the right time? We hear from a prospective student and answer their questions about moving to study during the global pandemic. Making the most of it? If you have decided to go for it in fall 21, our guests share their advice on how to really maximize your experience. So I'm joined by our first guest, Aiden Rashmita and Maya. Hey guys, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Maya, let's start with you. Okay, so my name is Maya. I'm uh, Lebanese from Lebanon, Beirut, and uh, I'm 25 years old. And I'm now I'm currently pursuing my master's at Columbia University in applied analytics. So uh, my bachelor's degree was in electrical engineering. I worked for three years, and now I'm here in New York thanks to Prodigy. And uh, yeah, that's a brief intro about me. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Rashmita. Uh, I'm from Mumbai, India. Uh, I've completed my undergraduate uh, studies in electronics and telecommunication uh, from the Mumbai University uh, in 2019. Uh, presently, uh, I'm working at uh, Cognizant as a programmer analyst. Um, I'm planning for I'm planning to pursue my master's in management information systems uh, from the US in fall 2021. I was supposed to go in fall 2020, but then COVID happened and then I had to defer all my admits to fall 2020. I, yeah. Sorry about that, but you know, a lot, a lot of people uh, had to be in that yeah. mode. So yes. Really we are glad that you're coming in 2021. You know. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Aiden. Yeah, uh, my name is Aiden. I'm from uh, Cape Town in South Africa. I've recently uh, graduated uh, my MBA from EDEC Business School in France. Uh, and currently I'm back in South Africa, uh, working in the financial sector uh, as an executive team lead. Perfect, perfect. It's good to have this uh, conversation going. Let's talk about like, you know, there are so many new universities, new fields. How did you start and how did you strategize those decisions? And what were the main issues you sort of had uh, during that decision making process? Let's start with Rashmita. Let's talk about like when you were selecting your universities, right? What were the challenges you faced during that time, like in your shortlisting process and your university selection process? Oh. I, I have been planning for masters from my second uh, from a third year of engineering or uh, third year of engineering I gave GRE two times or uh, in 2019 uh, I gave it again and uh, I was very uh, confused about what course to choose because I had done my engineering in electronics and telecommunication and I wanted to go into uh, management side also a little bit of technical uh, I wanted a little bit of technical as well. So that's why I chose this uh, management information system. Uh, then uh, there were many universities, many good universities like Syracuse, University of Buffalo, which uh, which I could re uh, I could relate to that university. I mean, the courses, uh, also the crowd over there. So it was easy for me while choosing uh, universities. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. How about you, Maya? Let's uh, let's talk to you. What were the you know difficult decisions you made, and you made you came through to New York? What were the challenges you sort of faced during that decision making process? Yeah. So uh, since I started my undergrad, I I always planned on doing my master's eventually, mm -hmm. but uh, when I graduated, I started working and. 
I changed, I changed two jobs, actually. I wasn't sure if I wanted to work or start my, start my master's. So I started looking into programs and I wanted something related to tech. So I looked into big data. Uh, first, I started looking into Spain and France and Europe. But then again, I saw this program in Colombia and I said, hey, why not try? Although I'm shooting for the stars, let's try. Um, it's better to try than nothing. So I did and I got accepted and to accept the, to, to, to take it, to take the acceptance, uh, it wasn't a hard decision, but everything else was hard and like preparing for the, for the interview, preparing for the application process, everything was hard. And even thinking about coming here, it, it was COVID time. So the embassy was closed and I had to, to go through the struggle. And I, I don't know if you heard about the explosion back in Beirut. So I had to make the option. I go and go on a full adventure and take the risks and uh, see where, where I'm gonna where I'm gonna get or stay back in Lebanon wait for everything to calm down and then come so uh, these were the struggles I, I couldn't even fi finance because I uh, finance my studies because I couldn't even transfer the monies um, uh, I, I I wanted to go early and start in fall but I couldn't because the embassy was closed and I couldn't get my visa um, all of, all of these kind of things were like challenging, stones in the road, but they didn't stop me. Nothing stopped me because it's like getting, like when you set a goal and uh, it's your dream and you want to get there, nothing can stop you, right? Correct. That's, uh, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, um, it, it, that's what everybody is saying, this 2020 fall and the, the people who have come through in COVID, the students who have come through COVID are the most resilient people of all because they are in such dilemma that if if they'll be able to make it to the US at the first place, you know, finding a job is a later, later discussion. Exactly. Uh, was Columbia your first choice and your dream school or was there any other options you were looking at? I think Columbia is everyone's dream school. <laughs> yeah, but... The first two schools I applied to were Imperial in the UK and Columbia University here. And I was working on the others to apply for the others, but I got accepted from Columbia. So I stopped and I decided to come here. Usually, um, I think it's contrary to, you know, the popular belief that, hey, let's apply to five to six schools. Why did you only apply to two schools? I want to know the thought process behind it. There, the main, the main thing that why I started with these two, because they are both are good with the program that I wanted, and they didn't need a GMAT at first. Oh yeah. So, so I didn't have my GMAT. I was preparing for the GMAT for the others, but yeah. I started my pro my process and my application with them, knowing that maybe Colombia was shooting for the stars and was very far fetched or whatever. So I yeah. said I will apply both ways, I'm going to work on the application. So yeah, when I got accepted, I stopped everything. And I, I'm lucky not to not to do my team <laughs> and not, not to do more exams in my life. Yeah, I've taken GRE twice. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> when I take any of those uh, set exams again, you know, I'm sure Rashmita has gone through that process yeah. as well. For sure. All right, Aiden, uh, on to you. Let's see, like, what were the difficult decisions? I know you already graduated, but, like, what were the difficult decisions you made while you were selecting your university, while you were, you, you went all the way to France to study? What were your challenges, sort of, which you faced uh, while that thought process, while that decision-making process? For me, um, the, the biggest decision was, was whether to do it or not. Um, I'd always wanted to do an MBA, but, uh, but at the moment, uh, my company was offering to send me uh, overseas um, uh, to, to join their head office there. So I was really in an existential crisis. You know, if I had gone over with the company, I would never have, have done an MBA. I probably would have stayed with them forever. But, um, but I decided to kind of to, to leave that aside um, and go and do the MBA because the real, the real thing that I was going after was I was looking to move from a, a marketing and strategy specialist into a more sort of commercial and executive role. 
um, and I knew that an MBA was probably the right thing to do. So, so that that was a big, you know, conflicting decision early on, you know, whether to do it. Um, from there, it was kind of um, it came down to to where I wanted to do it in Europe because um, I had ambitions to move to Europe, which I still do in the coming years. So, you know, to to study in Europe is obviously um, a, a great first step to do that. Um, I, uh, I looked at France and Spain. Obviously, they both have really good schools. Um, and I, I spoke to a lot to many of those schools, um, which is something that I, I definitely would advise speaking to schools and especially speaking to students at those schools. And ultimately, um, ultimately, the, the criteria that I was using was I was looking for a school that was well recognized in its country. I was looking for a school with a class that was really, really diverse. Um, and I was looking for a program that was quite short. I'm a little bit older than a lot of students. I was coming into an MBA at 33 years old. So I wasn't looking for an 18 month or 24 month MBA. I was looking for a more compact course to kind of um, to get through it and move out um, sooner than, 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 than possible. So those were kind of the criteria that, that I was thinking of. Was it like, um, I know you were just looking at two options between Spain and France. Was it too difficult to make the choice or did you just get into one school or did you get into both schools and you, you just decided France was the way to go? Yeah, so actually, actually um, I was really set on Spain. I'd spent a lot of time in Spain and then this school came out and I chatted with them and um, um, I connected so well with them um, and I was able to understand how different they were, um, especially in how small they were, how diverse they were, how serious they were about bringing in um, African candidates, for example, um, that I really just connected with them. Um, and from there, um, even though I was into one of the Spanish schools already, you know, once I had made that connection um, and I was in, I, I just felt like um, that was the right choice and I put the other two aside. Good man, good. And it's always, you know, you said that, oh, I'm a little older than the students, but it's, I think when you're in that position, it's great because you know exactly what you want. So you're not going to be confused or you're not in that flux like, hey, should I be making this decision? I'm taking such a big amount of, you know, uh, financial risk here. In your case, you know what you're getting into and what you want out of it. So I think that puts you in a better position when it comes to a program like an MBA, which is sort of more expensive than a, than a master's degree, right? Yeah, right. And I mean, especially for, you know, for countries with really soft currencies, you know, um, India, South Africa, South America, you know, it's, it's really, really expensive. So it's a massive financial, financial investment to make. But you're right. I think probably having a few more years under your belt makes you a little more certain. Um, but again, I would, I would say that what really helped um, deliver on that sense of certainty was speaking to the schools. And I would also um, suggest to ask schools to speak to somebody in the current class. And that really was a game changer for me, you know, to get on a Zoom call with somebody in the class um, and just hear firsthand, you know, what life is like at that school, um, that, that really helped me out. Oh yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. You did your, you did your homework, so that's, that's great. That's what I recommend to students also who come for advice to me, you know, just, hey, reach out to the students and current students would be the best people to tell you about the university and what's going on deep down there, right? And also the main thing to look is uh, at the course, I think. They have to prioritize course and then uh, uh, the region. I mean, uh, New York is colder than uh, Texas. So right. that way they can choose. And... Uh, also, the crowd over there, how diverse it is, like Aiden said. Does, does the brand value of the university really matter or the relevance of the courses you take? What do you think matters more when you start working? I think, Aiden, it's very relevant to your field right now. Yeah, sure. The brand value is undoubtedly important, but it's important mm -hmm. to ask the question, um, you know, to, to where and to what industry? And you have to step back and say, you know, what am I going to do? with this, you know, for example, um, in South Africa, MBAs aren't a big deal, you know, so going overseas and doing, you know, a, a very well recognized MBA only to come back to South Africa, it's, it's not all too relevant. You may as well stay in South Africa and do an MBA. Uh, EdHack, for example, is extremely well recognized in France, but not necessarily in Germany. So if my plan was to move into Germany, that wouldn't be a great school. So the brand amazing, but I think it's, 
it's only appropriate if you plan to use that in what you do next. And that's the big question. Uh, On to your second question um, around the courses. Yeah, I think I think people can get caught up with the brand as well um, and just say it's a great school. I'm just going there. For me, um, I knew that I needed to add financial and operational acumen to to my skill set. I didn't have that. So the school I chose has the best finance faculty in Europe. It doesn't necessarily have any great marketing or strategy, but I'm already pretty strong there and I'm really weak in finance and ops. So, um, so I knew going there would really kind of bolster that area in my sort of acumen. And um, in that regard, um, the courses themselves were really important. Uh, all right, everyone. Uh, this is our next segment called Advice Surgery. We're going to ask Rashmita here. Rashmita, you're planning to go this fall. You know, what are your concerns today? What are your questions which I could answer or which anyone else could answer uh, regarding to COVID or your concerns about moving abroad right now? Yeah, I wanted to know uh, what is the current scenario uh, for internships? Uh, like, uh, how will it change from this year? I think the majority of the companies have already moved forward to working from home, right? And a lot of companies are hiring students, but they're not asking them to come to their office or to come to the state even. So you could be sitting in Dallas and working in San Francisco, but maybe they will give you an option like, hey, you can come to the office or not come to the office. The market is opening up right now and it's booming again. and. I, it's very difficult for anyone to predict like where it's going uh, because it's going up and up and up. So it's a good market for job right now and it will be positive for a, for a long time because people have figured out how to navigate this pandemic now in the US at least. Um, so it, it should be good with uh, with your internship and jobs. But yeah, you will have to hit the ground running right as you come to the U.S. in in, uh, August. Apparently, things in the U.S. are getting better, so they might start getting in person and uh, in full. That's what I've been hearing. But yeah, the the online experience is not as bad as you can, as, as you may think. Like, the pros is that you can stay at home, study, and cook and uh, have all the time that you want and uh, what and uh, attend class and from your comfort zone but the con is that sometimes you will need to change this comfort zone and go see the campus see your friends communicate uh, with like have live conversation not only virtual yeah these are the pros and cons but now it's better than before because like people are starting to go out. Like you can mm. actually gather and with yeah. small groups, but you can go out, you can talk, you can see others, you can have conversations. Maya, I wanted to ask uh, the campus activities, do they still happen? The activities are mostly virtual. They're mostly online. Yeah, but if there you can access campus, you can sit uh, on the grass with, with your friends and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's totally like some other some other campuses are are in person, like NYU. My friends are going in person, so it depends on the campus. And then Rashmita, it varies like state to state as well, right? Because New York it has it. You know, they they are they're pretty good with COVID restrictions, and they had to because of the amount of people living in cities. I think I moved here at the right time, honestly. Whether whether. Despite the fact that it's uh, hybrid, online, and virtual, I think I did the right step because uh, the what I'm getting from the program is still the same. I'm still getting the same uh, uh, value that I will get whether it's on campus or online. Yeah, with with some compromises, I agree. But I think both ways I need I needed to compromise. Whether it's on campus, I, I will have needed to compromise. I think it's it's the right time for me to um, to uh, build my future, uh, 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 get there, get like achieve my goals and my dreams. 
there's there's been this assumption that you know during during this period of uncertainty maybe it's not the best time to do a master's or an MBA. Um, I personally disagree. I think that while the world kind of finds its feet, it's a great time to progress um, and be learning. Um, I think it's a far better time than when the world's going at breakneck speed and you kind of feel like you're being left behind learning. So while the world's now on pause, it's a great opportunity to step ahead. Um, and it's also important to remember that as the world comes out of this, the marketplace is going to be way more competitive um, because a lot of people have been laid off. So you want to be um, the best version of yourself. And if that version is coming out of the master's, you're way, way more marketable than you were before. So I think it's a perfect time actually to do a master's or any postgrad degree. And then just Rajmita, on your question about internships, um, I had my internships canceled uh, because of COVID. Um, and, and two pieces of advice there. The first is maybe it just means focusing on the sectors that are kind of bulletproof. Um, I focused on travel and tourism and we know where that went. Um, and I had two internships just canceled um, and that was a mistake um, and I had to learn. So, so focus on those sectors that you know are gonna come out strong and be resilient. And then my final piece on internships is be creative. You're gonna have to be creative. You can't sit back and wait. Um, when my internships were canceled, I went back to one of my past employers and I offered to consult with them on an internship pro bono with no money. Um, and they trusted me. So of course they said, yes, it was a huge win for them. That led to another consulting job. And before I knew it, I had several. Um, and that made me way more marketable um, because I had a big name behind me. Nobody knew that I was doing it for free. And I guess the lesson is you got to just be really creative. You know, if you sit back while there's so much uncertainty, you'll be left behind. But, you know, as I said earlier, there's so many opportunities. Um, you just got to be a bit agile um, and you'll find your feet. Tatum, I love that uh, the free thing, nobody knows that it, you're providing the service for free. That makes so much sense. You know, It's work after all, they don't know that. We will be talking about how you can maximize your experience uh, once you have gotten to the university, once you have graduated the university and sort of what are your expectations when you are getting into the university as well. I think, um, I think the best way, like, we'll, we'll go to Aiden on this, you know. What advice would you like to give uh, students, Aiden, that, hey, these are the things you could do for networking? Because I know networking is important. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, you should do networking, but never tell students how to do networking. So, Aiden, why don't you share some tips on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and I understand the concern, of, of course. I, I came out of my MBA right in the middle of COVID. Um, so, uh, you know, not a good time to finish an MBA. You need, you need, you know, more than a one, uh, one pronged strategy here. So you have some people that are focusing on, you know, um, past ex employers and others that are networking and others that are applying for jobs online and all three kind of um, seem to be strategies, but you need to do all three. Um, I was doing all at the same time. Uh, you're going to find in your program that you're going to have employers uh, coming onto campus or even having virtual workshops, um, you, you've got to you've got to stand out there, and put your hand up. Uh, there'll be opportunities to lead those forums, for example. There'll be opportunities to chair uh, roundtables and fireside chats and things like that. Those are amazing opportunities to stand out to the big employers. You know, and once you've done that, it's really easy to reach out afterwards and say, you know, hey there, Uber, you might have remembered me. I hosted this forum. Then you're ahead of everybody else. So you've got to be on the lookout for these little opportunities. They're everywhere. And while you're doing that, you've got to network, which means you've got to socialize. You know, you can't just have your head down doing the books. You've got to go out. You've got to be meeting people, having fun with them. And the more they like you, the more they'll refer you. So, so that's networking. It's not just business networking, you know, um, that we call these warm leads and warm contacts. You know, if they're warm, they'll be much more willing to refer you, but you've got to make a connection with them. So I'd say yeah. use those little opportunities when employers come onto campus, even virtually, they are there. And very few students take the opportunity. Ask questions, prepare before everyone. Have the first question, have the most interesting question. You will stand out. Network. Um, and then honestly, uh, it's become a bit of an unpopular thing to say, but 
I would also apply for those jobs online. Um, at the moment, it's become really trendy to say they never work. Uh, the ATS systems rule you out. You, you can't rule yourself out. You know, look at them. The, the role I'm in now, they found me online. Um, so it, it didn't come from networking or from those forums. Um, it was online. So I'd say you kind of have to have all three. Um, you got to go forensic online. You've got to use the opportunities. Um, you've got to find networking opportunities. And then the fourth one would be use your coaches. You know, all of the programs are going to have um, coaching teams uh, and, uh, and careers teams. Use them. Even today, past the program, I still check in on them and say, there's an opportunity here. What do you think? N not everybody uses them. you got to. So, I mean, the general direction would be you've got to milk all of these opportunities. Oh. In my experience, there's the four. There's the networking, the employer opportunities, the online career opportunities, and your career as coaches. And you've got to kind of sweat all of them. I and mean, if you do that, you'll give yourself a great chance. That's, Thank that's you. Awesome. Thank you. That's perfect, Eden. Thank you so much. Maya, uh, Maya, are you planning to do your PhD after this? Are you planning to work after your master's? No, I'm actually, uh, want, I actually want to work after my master's. Yeah. So uh, what, what's your advice on... Uh, like yeah, writing? so I'm in the process of all of that. And I'm going to tell you what one of my professors said. Uh, one of them said that if you are focusing on GPA, uh, if you are putting much time on the GPA, you are wasting most of your time. You need to focus on networking and networking is not looking for jobs, but uh, basically getting to know other people. Even if you're not interested in the job, if you get to know them and know what they do, uh, you might end up uh, interesting in the company they work at or in the job position that they want. And as an international student, we want, we want anything that comes in our way. We cannot be as picky as, as we want to be. You still have time to network. Like you need to start, if you can start yesterday, it, it, would, be, it, would, be, it would be better than starting yeah. today. And I think there are a lot of like, you know, with international students, especially a lot of people hold back like, hey, for the first career fair, maybe I'm not ready or I'm not qualified enough. Let, let me wait. Let me see in the next one. But I think you should go for it. So just having that thought that, hey, you never know who you're going to come across because it's a small world. So you should just talk to everyone and anyone mm -hmm. and build that relationships. Maya, I know you went through some of the tough times as well, like these, you know, uh, what would be your advice for the students to get through this time? Like, hey, this is what you should be doing. So my advice is not to be scared. Mm -hmm. Things are easier than you think. And, uh, and to go for it because it's uh, to go for that adventure. I call it an adventure because like you're, you're gonna try new things. You're gonna meet new people. You're gonna meet your, a new you that, you that you weren't aware of. Like my main advice is like, don't let anything stop you. Nothing, nothing, not even financials, not even, uh, not even you. Don't, don't let yourself stop you from uh, getting closer to what you set uh, your goals to, to what you aim for. Uh, don't let anything stop you, take the risk and go for it because it's not as hard as it seems. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah, one of, uh, so, so I, I read it somewhere that they, like for example, in conversations, you know, you're always scared to have that difficult conversations with people while you're negotiating for the offer or while you're talking to your boss. Don't think about the end decision of the conversation, rather think of it as a process and enjoy that process. And once you'll start realizing that the process is, is it's just easy just having a conversation with other guy it, it will be so much easier to to go through that conversation or to go through that part of your life i agree and uh, the outcome would be very satisfying afterwards yeah yeah, yeah and the the process is the success not the outcome yeah. how, how about you aiden i know like uh you came to cape town you're, you're doing your own business. You're running your own business right now on the side as well while working for a company. What would be your advice on um, for students like, hey, 
these are my uh, these are my words of wisdom if you would say yeah well i can't say that there was a wisdom but there words at least um the words of experience we can okay. call it um yeah so okay my, my advice would be to to try and get involved in everything you can you know there's there's this old cliche about mbas and masters programs which is you know you only get as much out as you put in to the program and it's absolutely true you know you're going to have people coming into the program to get the degree and to move on and they're not going to get much out of it but there's so many opportunities in each of these programs um, that you can kind of squeeze the life out of you know there's going to be opportunities to lead where you've never done it before you know you're going to be able to lead um, your class clubs your groups, um, you're going to be able to lead employer forums, networking opportunities. You're going to have opportunities to um, to engage with brand new people that speak different languages um, that you have nothing in common with, you know, that might make you nervous. You might not be a native English speaker. Use that opportunity to hang around native English speakers, you know, um, connect with your professors outside of class um, connect with your careers coaches at every opportunity. You've got these and you've paid for them, you know, to do this just for your degree, I'd say would be a waste, you know, but to build on what Maya said, it is the process, you know, um, it goes so fast, it will be over so quickly. It is the process, which is where the value lies. It's not the degree, it's not the end. Um, I'm a similar person at the end, but that process is only as good as you want it to be. Um, so, so go very early and, and look for opportunities and take everyone, you know, it's, you're going to be nervous um, get over it. You know, you've paid a lot of money and you only have a short time. Um, every opportunity to engage, connect and learn, you got to take it because um, you're only going to do this once. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Thank, thanks. Thanks everyone uh, for that advice. I really appreciate it, you know, uh, and I think we need to keep reminding students as well, like, hey, it's the process and not the end results and you got to do this kind of networking. It's, it, it, you just have to do that. And it's like, hey, sh you know, shower doesn't last forever. You have to take it every day. And sim it's like similar with motivation. You have to get it every day and kind of push yourself through day by day and, and get your work done. So thanks, thanks for all your wisdom. Appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. You know, it, this is going to give so much advice and so much insight uh, to the current students who will be listening or to the future students who will be listening. And Aiden, I loved all your advice, man. Uh, um, maybe I'll consult with you on my startup, you know, later on. Uh, all, and Maya, thanks for your insight. Rashmi, thanks for jumping in. And hopefully everything you do, you would be successful in it. Uh, but thanks everyone who's watching and if you have any questions please please feel free to reach out to us in the comments or reach out to us on LinkedIn we'll be ha be happy to answer those I'm sure I'm speaking to all uh, for all four of us uh, we have all been there we have all been through this process and we understand um, what it takes to get here and uh, to survive here so thanks everyone thanks thank you uh, Bart. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Maya. No problem. And uh, Rashmita, good luck. And Maya, um, enjoy the rest of your program. Um, it's super exciting, amazing school. Uh, I'm sure it's going to set you up for success. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck to all of you, too. <laughs>